This is very, very simple. Uh-oh, he's got the electrical components out. Hey, Mr. Breadboard, we haven't seen you in a while. All right, so this is, like I said, very, very simple. This is literally everything that you will need. I guess we'll start off with the chip, which is an LM3915. What it is is it's an integrated circuit that is actually a VU meter or a volume level indicator. Now, if you grew up in the 80s and the early 90s, you know exactly what I'm talking about, and you will see when we're done. So this is pretty much the first thing you need. They are super cheap. I got mine on eBay. No, actually, sorry, I got mine on Amazon. And I think it was like $2 for 20 of them. It was a really good deal. They have really thick leads on them. They seem to be of really good quality, even if they are knockoffs. I'm... I'm kind of doubting that they're knockoffs, to be honest with you. I think they're real. So you'll need that. Another thing you'll need is 10 LEDs. Then you need a 1K resistor. And literally, other than the input for components, that's about it. For the input, I modified this old RCA jack and went ahead and tinned the leads on the end of that. For anyone who's unfamiliar with what tinning is, it just basically means that I put solder on the ends of the wires. It'll give it a lot more stability and be much more durable. Now other than that, I guess you're going to need a breadboard and a bunch of jumpers. But other than all that, it's a very cheap and very easy introduction into hobby electronics. And eventually my plan is going to be to take two of them and to retrofit them into this old equalizer. I figure I'm just going to kind of drill a couple holes up here, 20 of them. 10 for each channel and run it like that, that will be a future episode. You know, and another thing is, is all these components are very, very cheap and very readily available. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and set up and let's go ahead and start building this circuit. All right, so here we go. I think I'm going to go ahead and put up a picture of the circuit diagram on there. So you guys can kind of follow along and see what I'm doing a little bit better. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so now pretty much anything 10 through 18, those are all LEDs, as well as number one. It's going to start out with number one being the lowest and number 18 being the highest. And then when it comes to LEDs, when you look where the two leads come in, the anode and the cathode, the anode is going to be the smaller piece on the left. The bigger one on the right is always going to be your cathode or your ground. Another way to tell is the leads are always longer on the anode or the positive end of the LED. Now what we're going to have to figure out is I'm going to try to make all of this a power because these run on the power end. And then what actually manipulates the lights is the chip, which is actually going to be the ground side of your LED. Yep. All right, so what we will do, let's go ahead and start throwing some LEDs in first. Go ahead and start with 10. Remember, the long lead is going to be the one that we're going to want to go to our power source. So we'll go out from number 10, and I'm going to run it there in the blue, which is usually dedicated for a ground. But we're going to run our power on this side, so it's not really going to matter. So now let's just throw some LEDs in. So basically I went ahead and connected all these LEDs. Pretty much all what's going on is you're going to put the negative lead of each LED to each one of these between 10 and 19, or excuse me, 18. 
Number one is also going to connect the ground to the first LED goes there to number one. So we're gonna take a jumper from pin one and then go to the same trace that is actually on our first LED, which is on number six there. Now we got four more grounds. We've got two has a ground, pin four has a ground, and then eight goes straight to ground. So I'm gonna start with eight. We're gonna make our happy little ground right over there. And we'll go to two. It'll be easier for us to reference. Take number two, bring that to ground. So then we got number four. There's two, jump one, go to four. Bring that back over to our ground. Okay, so now we have to connect six to seven, which are these two right next to each other. So really simple. Go ahead and put that one in seven, put this one in six. Now we have a jumper jumping them. Then we take our lovely 1K ohm resistor, and then that's going to go from the end of lead seven to ground. This is all of our, it's all our ground. Okay, that'll work. Now, as far as hooking up your power to it and your input, that is the whole circuit. So now I'm going to go ahead and hook up this cable, which is actually going to give us our input. Yellow one is the positive, and then obviously the bare copper one is our ground. So number five is our signal input, which is this open one right here. I think I'm going to try to get this into the ground first. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this without pliers. Oh, she went. Okay, and then we very carefully put this into number five. Oh, she came out, son of a bitch. All right, so now very carefully we will put this into number five. I'm going to do some counting. And voila. Then on our ground. Back to our ground. All right, so our input is hooked up. Now all we have to do is throw some power in it and hook up some music. So now for our power, we have to not only run the LEDs, we also have to run the chip. So number three is where our power input goes. And then I'm gonna take and run it over to this ground that I said, which is actually not a ground, it's gonna be power. Now all we will have to do is run some power to either over here or over here, and then get a ground over here. And then like I said, hook up some music, and then we can check out the lights, man, groovy. All right, so I had to move everything on my breadboard. There it is. It's all laid out. Everything is the exact same. Some of the wires might be different colors from where they were, but everything's set up just the same as it was. The only difference is from number nine right here, that is what selects the mode for dot or bar. I'm going to take it and put it to the positive side of our power input, and that'll put it in bar mode. So there we go. Had to change out a couple LEDs too. I had some burned out ones. Okay, so I got the power hooked up. I'm using my power supply running at 4.6 volts, 670 milliamps. That should be fine. The good thing about that chip is it has a high voltage range that you can use. I think from like 3 to 20 volts. 
So I've got my power hooked up just to a red and a black lead. One going to ground, one going over to the, the positive side. Okay, so now you might have noticed this yellow wire. All that's doing is jumping this line of traces with the other line of traces. Where that void is indicates that these traces are not connected. We have one side of our 3.5 millimeter to RCA jack. We have one channel hooked up to the LM3915. The other channel is going to be hooked up to the tweeter so we can hear what's going on. Like I said, that's just a regular 3.5 millimeter jack. I'm going to be playing some YouTube music from my phone. Well, all right, so we got it all hooked up, got my phone hooked up. Let's see what happens.